Uh huh. Usually we do it in the kitchen or in there. First time she's done it in here. We've done it like ten times. Have you? Yes. It looks like you're live. You might check. Oh yeah, yeah I'm checking. Still not live. We are live on YouTube. If we have to go to the bathroom, can we get out? Yes, there? but they can hear you. You know. Now they can. <laughs> Your question has been asked and, and answered. We'll answer it live. <laughs> yeah, I'll answer it live for you, Mama. Yep. Uh, All right, so you're on. We're on. Tell everybody hi. Oh, hi, everybody. We're on Facebook and YouTube. As you can tell, I made it. I just eked in the door, barely. Don't and we're here. Do you want me to start, Michael? I'm waiting for the director back here to tell me. I've been telling you to start. You've been telling me to start? <laughs> yes. Um. Huh. I had a whole list of things that I was going to go over with you guys, but I have to tell you, you guys think it's funny watching us sometimes hear Tar and Mike do the things they do. You should hear behind the scenes before we start what goes on. I'm going to give you a little, little pre or a little idea of what happens just like five minutes before we started, and it's going to embarrass everybody no. in the room. I've got no. four of my biggest critics. I'm doing this with four of my biggest, biggest critics sitting back there, my children and my parents. So you, you guys got to encourage me amen. tonight because, amen. <laughs> and you, and so what happened right before we went on? My mom, my mom and dad are here tonight, and my mom said to my dad, "Are your teeth staying in?" <laughs> he said, "Yeah." So then Tara tells my mom, says, "I'm going to be a homemaker for a month," and she said, "Tara's sitting over here mending." And she was looking in her basket. She said, she said, I can't find my elastic. Where's my elastic? And my mom said, your glasses are on your face. And Tara said, no, I'm looking for my elastic. And then she turns over to Dave and she says, maybe we should name the, the show Drop Your Drawers and Try On Your Pajama Bottoms because Man, that's what she's please, working no. on now is Dave's pajamas. Stop. <laughs> so uh. this is what I listen to right before I start doing this. I Oh, yeah, and then after she couldn't find the elastic, she said, that's it, I quit. I'm not going to be a housemaker anymore, homemaker anymore. <laughs> so she quit five minutes after she started being a homemaker. Okay. Um, Everyone's saying hi. Yeah, oh, good, say, I can't see the comments, hello. guys. Hi, I miss hey. that, I miss that. So nice to see you, Jill. Nice to see you, Jill. I'm so glad you made it. Oh, thank you, guys. It was actually a pretty good trip. I... The weather was perfect, and until I got about an hour and a half from TARS, and I panicked just slightly because there was black clouds circling me all the way around, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, out of the blue, it was like a blizzard. Snow started flying, and the wind was blowing, and it was just, I thought, oh, great, what am I getting into? But it went away after about 40 minutes, and I got out of it real, you really fast. in the library. All the clouds just went around us. Yeah, it was really strange. <laughs> it was like circled in black clouds all yeah. the way around. But I, I made it here with nothing happening, thank goodness. I don't see... I can see a whole bunch on there. Hi, everybody. Hi, yeah. everybody. Everyone's saying hi. Um, says hello from New York, Diane. Hello, Joe from the UK. Oh. Greetings from Germany. From Germany, too. Wow, wow. guys. We do have a lot of you. Um, I will start out first. Tara said you guys might like to see these. I don't know if you can see them very well from this direction. Camera can one. they see them, Michael? You'll have... Oh. These are my gingerbread men. Tara said you oh, might yeah, yeah. a few of them. One of them's upside down. Yeah, they've got a oh, couple, upside, couple upside, down. upside down. Yeah, they're upside down. Which Betty of these wants... gingerbread men don't belong? <laughs> I had to put them upside down so they drive here fine. I I didn't do very many this year, but I did bring for the grandkids and my great nieces and nephews and everything. So I thought, well, i just show you what those look like. And I had some small ones, but I think Dave ate most of them already since I got oh, here. Oh, no, there's still like <laughs> so, half a plate there. But half anyway, I thought you might like a glance right. of my gingerbread men. Wait, Jack, uh, so save cute. some. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you. The biggest ones I've ever seen. They, I have a special cookie cutter thing that I use these for. Um, use oh, with it these. Oh, it's huge. I saw it's some at the grocery store the other day. A cookie cutter? A picture, yeah. Oh wow! But I had somebody make this for me. This big cookie cutter, and it works out really handy. Um, I like it real well. That's a little boy, and then I do the little girls like this. Sometimes, usually, I try to write their names across the bottom, but um, I hurt my arm this past year, and so I haven't been able to do as many 
gingerbread men as much with them this year or anything. All so right. So Betty has a very important question for What's you. What's that? She's the first question of the night. She asked, how much chocolate did you eat on the way here? I saw that. Oh, you'll never guess. I had the worst time. I always bring, the kids get so frustrated with me because I bring boxes of food and I let all the groceries run out. And so I didn't have anything to bring. And um, I had mounds of fudge in the car. And it's a good thing I did this, that I was bringing back here for Christmas. And I buried it among all the packages in the trunk and every place. They were all buried. I forgot to get me one candy bar. I didn't have one speck of chocolate. The only thing I had was two pieces of fudge that I pulled out before I packed the car. I thought I was going to die. You can ask Tara. I walked in the door and I was almost dead, wasn't I? Oh, I'm not supposed to be talking to her. I forgot. I'm she's not vacation. on the show. She's on vacation. She's not supposed I'm to not be supposed watching. to be talking. She's not supposed to be watching. So I didn't get to have any chocolate. And I stopped at the store, or not the store, at, I was stopping to get gas. And I thought maybe I could get me something at McDonald's or something, like a milkshake or something, chocolate shake. And that's when the storm hit. So all that I could do was, oh, I, okay, I... I'm going to totally embarrass Tar and Mike are going to sit back there rolling their eyes, having... Oh, have mercy. Tar just said, oh, have mercy, because they're so afraid to let me have the microphone and camera because they don't know what I'm going to do. But when I told you that big storm was coming, why I stopped, I had to stop and get gas in the middle of it. I had to go to the bathroom so bad I thought I was going to die, and I was almost out of gas. So I debated, and I thought, I'll run in and go to the bathroom first. And I thought I'd get chocolate then. That's why this relates to the chocolate. But I ran in there, and I thought, there's no way I can take time to buy, buy anything. So I ran in, used, was using the bathroom, and I was laughing so hard. I thought, my next book, if I write one, I think I'll write about what little girls, three, four, five-year-old girls, say to their moms in a public restroom while they're going to the bathroom. It was hilarious. This little girl in the stall next to me was telling her mom, Mom, did you go potty or poopy? You did, Mom? Why did you go over there? Why didn't you go poopy in here, Mom? You, and I was just cracking up, and I thought, the conversations that grandmas and moms get to hear in these public bathrooms is just a crack up. Am I yeah, embarrassing guys, you? Do Am that. I embarrassing you, Dave? I love it. I'm embarrassing you. So well, I don't do it, so I'm not really embarrassed. So you're not. <laughs> yeah. it, it is so funny. If you sit and listen, well, I know you got better things to do than sit in public restrooms and listen to the conversations, but it is really funny to listen to these conversations. So here I went from hearing all that and dying laughing, and I go about, oh, 45 miles or so, and I'm coming to the outskirts of Denver, and here's this monster billboard. I don't know, Mike, if you guys saw it when you were coming in, and it says pooplessyard.com. Yes. yes. And I thought, pooplessyard.com? Uh, I thought, what kind of a billboard is that? And what kind of a company is that? Yeah. And I couldn't, I thought, are you kidding me? And here across the bottom, it says that what it will pick up your doggy's waist or something like that. I thought, oh my goodness, what is the world's coming to now? <laughs> they even had that. So I had a fun trip, but that was just the chocolate check question, wasn't it, Michael? I got carried away. Okay, yeah. what's the other question? Okay, ask one. question. Ask questions, guys, because I, I need some questions. We have and no I idea answer. what to talk about. A lot of people just... say they love you being here, and they love your storytelling style. Oh, <laughs> thank you, guys. Thanks. Any more questions? Uh, I don't see none. none. At the moment, do What'd you, you say? want to share some Anything? of your... Oh, Denise just said, hey, Dave. Oh, she's talking to you. Talk to you. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, what I'll do since we don't, while well, I'm waiting for, oh, go ahead, Mike. Well, actually, Miss Pris76 uh, says, what are you going to do this year for Christmas? I would like to know. Well, what we'll do is, have a nervous breakdown. Tara says, have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> she's supposed to be here, <laughs> I'm being a housewife. <laughs> she's being a housewife. Michael's hollering at her. She's not supposed to be here. I, what we'll do is, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> I'm at Taurus, so we're flying by the seat of our pants is what it amounts to. If I was at my mom's house, we'd have every hour scheduled out, and, and, and I'd know exactly what I would be doing. But probably what we'll do is I will be over here on Christmas Eve, and uh, my folks go to my brother's on Christmas Eve. I'm looking at my mom to see if she's nodding yes. And um, so we have our big spread. We have all kinds of 
uh, snacks and dips and chips and crackers and salads and stuff like that, our big Christmas dinner. And presents. And presents. And then Obviously. after our dinner, we, and if they have church, we will go to church for Christmas Eve service and come home, and then we'll open the presents. And um, after... Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. and so we'll open Two all the presents, before. and then s Christmas morning, usually Santa Claus comes, so we have all the big spiel with Santa stuff and doing all that, and Tara sometimes fix cinnamon rolls out of the can, the canned cinnamon roll. Well, I didn't mean... I didn't I'm mean... To, <laughs> she's not a homemaker, so she makes them in a can. <laughs> well, you can make them from scratch this year because you're a homemaker now, officially. But she, yep. it's kind of like a tradition to have the canned cinnamon rolls for Christmas morning. And, and uh, crescent rolls, too. Those are, oh, on those Christmas are Eve, we always have crescent rolls okay. on Christmas Eve. Yeah, you can tell. And Here we're cookbook authors, and we're having canned crescent rolls and canned cinnamon <laughs> rolls on Christmas yes. morning. And so then after that... Um, we pretty much take it easy. We kind of do it that way because when we got sick, it was too much for us to do Christmas Eve and then fix another whole dinner on Christmas Day. And I really like it better this way because then all day Christmas, we can just relax. Tara and I can relax too. And we don't have to fix any meals because we have all the food left over from the night before. We can play with the kids and their toys. Although I was thinking, do you know, it's really strange. It's like all the dads play with the kids and the toys and the moms are usually in the kitchen cooking and fixing dinner. And I got to thinking, there is some truth to that fact that the only difference between men and boys is the price of their toys. I, that dawned on me this morning because the dads are always in playing with the kids on their toys. But anyway, so we just take it totally easy and relax. Sometimes, if there's enough of us, we'll maybe play cards or games or something, you know, to that effect. But we just really take it pretty easy So on Christmas. Christmas Eve is our big is our big Christmas stuff for us, really. So. Um, what do you do that keeps you busy each day? Me? What keeps me busy? <laughs> uh, <laughs> About that. <laughs> Wait, my mom just yelled the telephone. My phone <laughs> literally rings off the hook. She's a grandkid in hotline. I'm the grandkid hotline. <laughs> Jesus, I'm the grandkid hotline. Yes. I know they'll call. I said, does your mother know about this yet? No, I haven't told mom yet. <laughs> You're a grandparent, grandkid therapist? Grandkid therapist, yes. And I really, I do get lots and lots of telephone calls from not just the grandkids, but then Tar and I talked a lot about, you know, business stuff, doing things or different... Tori just knocked the lights all over. And so we talk a lot. I talk to my mom. Oh, what I call you about every other day, probably, or something. So I talk to my mom. But uh, my neighbor calls. I have different people that I know that call all the time for different questions and stuff. And so I really spend. And it's not that I, I don't do so much calling myself. It's just my phone rings, rings off the hook. Oh, it, it was so, I, I got to tell you. I'll get back to what I do all day long. I lost my cell phone just a couple of days before I came here. That was so nice. It was Quiet. like heaven. It was yeah. like heaven. I didn't have any phone calls. It was so wonderful. And I I just I was just thinking about that those couple of days. It was so quiet and peaceful. What the problem with I don't I don't keep, I don't have a normal cell phone. I just have a little flip phone. And I don't use it for any social media to do anything at all, except I call my mom and Tar because I don't have long distance on my regular phone. So I call them. And I, the only reason I was concerned is because I was coming back here and I needed a phone for the trip in case I break down or have an emergency, which happens about what, 75% of the time I usually have something. <laughs> so I needed that phone for that. But it was kind of hard this time not being able to call my mom or Tara because um, it's Christmas. So I've got to say, did you get Dave this present? I got Jack this present. No, don't buy them that. You know, we, we call back and forth a lot at Christmas time. I got Dave that shirt. <laughs> I got Dave that shirt. Don't Listen to it. you. 
<laughs> Jill calls with the warning. You got to go to this store right now because it's getting picked over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I oh, called yeah. Michael. Michael, he called me. He was wanting to know about Tara's presence. I said, it's getting picked over at, at Big Lot. Well, I shouldn't have said. It's all right. I didn't find it. Oh, okay. He didn't find he it. Got there too it got, no, it's getting picked there. over. So I said, you better get over there and get there to get her stuff and everything. So... But I do, I do have a lot of phone calls, and I know it doesn't <clears throat> seem like it, but I do, uh, I do a lot of the business stuff. Not a lot now. I don't do quite so much now. I used to do two new newsletters a week. I would write um, one on Tuesday, and I would do a whole article on something, a post on something. So that took me a lot of time. I spent quite a few hours doing that each week. And then I had to write another newsletter for menu i put a menu tips and new recipes on there every week so i stayed busy with that type of stuff and tara does consult me once in a while you know on things for the business uh like that so i do have that that i have to do so i really i i keep busy from the time i get up in the morning until i go to bed at night it's like something all the time I was trying to think of other things that i do too i do um i take care of the comments on on the website, I do all the comments on the website. I answer them. So if you ever need to get in touch with me, just make a comment on one of the posts on the website, and I'll see it immediately. So I do that during the day. Um, and then I do, I have to take care of all my handyman work. So I, I'm forever having something to fix like that. Uh, I do a lot of sewing, especially this time after Christmas. I'll be doing more sewing. I do a lot of, um, I sew a lot of quilts and that type of thing. So... Yes. We have a lot of questions about gifts for, somebody was asking, where was it, what do you give, uh, oh, Chris, what gifts do you give the grandkids, and also, maybe this would be part of the same question, maybe Esther asked, do you spend more money on Christmas gifts as your grandchildren get older? What gifts oh, do I give the grandkids, that. and do I spend more money as they get older? I'll answer the second one first. No, no. I don't. Actually, well, usually it's the opposite. I need to qualify that a little bit. <laughs> I usually sp What? <laughs> there goes no. your Christmas. You no, haven't got no, the Christmas no. presents yet. You better no, be good, boy. I mean, never mind. Whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I say that, no, I don't. But what happens is up until they're about five years old, maybe, I don't spend a whole lot of money. But I get them a lot of presents. I can go to like the Dollar Tree, but I used to go to the thrift store. I can't go so much because my thrift store closed down. And I could buy a ton of toys for like $5 for the little kids, you know. I would get lots of stuff. They get a lot of a lot of actual gifts to open. They're not expensive, but they get a lot of gifts. So I don't didn't spend quite so much when the kids were little tiny, but then when they got a little bit older... And I would add it to the bigger kids, take that money and add to the bigger kids' this gift. But once they got, like now Jack and on, um, it, they're all even. Even the adults and all of them get the same amount of gifts. What do I buy them? You know, it just really, it's all over the... Uh, I just start. I almost told what David's presents were. I was going to say, like, I got Dave this year. <laughs> I started to give all of his presents away. I, what they do is I say, send Nan a list. You better send me a list. And Dave's really, I mean, Dave, the minute it's out of my mouth, send Nan a list. He's on that computer sending me my list. Uh, well, about the week before, it's a month and a half away. I would just go browsing on Amazon. I'm like, what do I want? And so, yeah. So he, I just he, throw a bunch of stuff on He does good. Once. He gives a good list. I tell him it has to be like $25 or less. And so they go on there and they start buying. I had some or, expensive things. Or sit, not buying, were, but sending me set lists. I had some expensive things, but they were mainly just for me to remember. Yeah, yeah. What they were, yeah. They do pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So we've got some others. Uh... Well, a few, few short things. Steph says, your house is so beautifully decorated right down to the curtains. Since Tara is observing. Yep. Thank you. And, I think the tree's really cute this year. Um, Crystal said, what happened to Tara's plan to lock herself in the bedroom? And a different Crystal <laughs> said, hi, Dave and Jill. Tara, love Tara. I hear you. <laughs> so, Grandma and Grandpa came over. Oh, her excuse is Grandma and Grandpa came over, so she has to stay out here is what her excuse is. So, and yeah. uh, LaDiana was asking Jill, what was your favorite toy as a kid, and what was the best thrifty gift you made for your kids? The best thrifty gift I made for my kids? Well, 
Okay, those those are all loaded. First of all, I'll start with my favorite toy. It was not when I was a kid so much, although I did have one. I had a Ricky Jr. doll. Do you know um, I Love Lucy and Ricky Ricardo? They had Ricardo. They had a little boy called Ricky Jr. And that was a big TV series then. And I got and they had their baby. So that year they had. Mm. Uh, a doll come out that was like him and that was like one of my favorites my dad well I had a princess doll I got one year and my dad had a kimono when we were in Japan had it put on there uh, my dolls probably were my favorite toys that I had and I then I think though my all-time favorite was one year my mom and my grandma they went and sewed Barbie doll clothes for me. I was older then. I was about 12, at least 12, I think. And they sewed, the, sewed all these Barbie doll clothes for me. And they were the most beautiful. I wish, if I'd known they were going to ask that question, I would have brought them. They These clothes are not like normal homemade clothes. They are just like designer Barbie doll clothes. They're beautiful. My mom even had a knitting machine that you, uh, not hand knit, but a, she knows how to hand knit, but it was a knitting machine. She made a cardigan sweater that just looked like, I mean, it was just unbelievable. It was so pretty. And I always remember because we had a German Shepherd and I was sitting in the living room and the dog came running out with his stuff in his mouth and my mom started yelling, oh no, you can't see that. And she ran over to the dog and grabbed it. And he had gotten under the bed where they were hiding all these Barbie doll cl clothes and brought a mouthful of the Barbie clothes <laughs> out right before Christmas. But dolls, I think mostly, don't you think, Mo? I love dolls mostly. Mm -hmm. I, lo I love paper dolls and dolls. So um, what was the other part of the diet? Answer the other part of the question. Oh, homemade yeah. stuff for the kids. Okay, you guys are going to think I'm kind of strange here. But, and well, I guess I did do some homemade stuff. I think I made... I, I didn't do a whole a lot of homemade stuff. I sew all the time. I've done almost every craft known to man, and I know how to do crafts, and I don't mind doing crafts. I don't do a whole lot now, but um, it's really odd because I always got... Um, my mom did really good making clothes, and did she she's did sewing on just beautiful. And so I, I was a little bit into sewing. I knew how to do it, but I wasn't quite like my, didn't do quite as good as my mom, you know, and just wasn't into it quite that much. And I don't know, I, growing up, I'd always had a lot of homemade clothes and things. And like I said, my mom made them like these designer outfits, but I just, and after I got married, it was, everything was, I had to buy things at thrift stores and uh, secondhand and things like that. After my husband left, we just, I never got to go shop. What I'm trying to say is I never got to go to the store hardly and just go shopping at a store and buy stuff. And I really, I had a lot of stuff that had been made, but I didn't have stuff you just buy at a store. So to me, a treat is getting stuff from a store, uh, brand new things from a store. And so I didn't really make a whole lot of homemade stuff for my kids and two I was just very careful with my money and so I would just buy them you know at the thrift store or whatever the toys so I could spend a lot of money and so it cost me more to make the homemade gifts than to actually buy them toys I know that was a long answer but I didn't know how else to answer that Do you um, have another one Jamie well I've seen this through everyone else but Jamie brought it up too um people want to know what your skincare routine is because uh you look beautiful she oh, well, thank amazing. you. Thank you. People have said your skin looks like flawless. And... Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if Mike or Dave can bring it up, but if you go to our YouTube channel and type in uh, Jill's or Tara's um, makeup routine, we've got a video on there that I go into detail about what I use. Um, I mostly use, well, my mom would sit back there and say, I just get my natural, young, beautiful looks from her, I'm sure is what she'd say. <laughs> She's over there laughing. I use Amazon. It's M period A S A M. And I get it off of HSN. That's one of the few things I do buy off a of home shopping network. And I wait till they have their sales in October and March. And I usually use their line of products. And I think it's a Vino, Vino line of theirs that I use. And, uh, but you know, 
I sell Mary Kay for years and I used Mary Kay for years and that worked really good for me too. I think part of it, I wish I could take credit, but I think part of it, it is your genes. You know, um, my mom always looked really young for her age. I mean, she won't come over in the camera now, but she's 90 years old, and you would not probably think that she was that old if you saw her, really. And she still for, looks really good. Yeah, she. Yeah. did you hear Dave? He's, he said she still looks really good. Go grandma. Go grandma. Go grandma. Go grandma. Go grandma. Yep. So, um, so, you know, part of it is that. But I think if you find a, a skin care line that works good on your skin and you just do it is part of what the what it is uh it, it's be keep it on top of it you know and use it at regular is what happens oh and also you know i would be kind of careful of doing things like smoking um and lots of weight loss where you gain a whole lot and then you lose a whole lot and then you gain a whole lot different health issues like that you you know be as much as you can, be careful on those types of things because it does, like when you smoke, you know, it makes your lips get really r more wrinkled than normal. Uh, probably, I don't wear sunglasses, but I'm sure if you wear sunglasses, it would help too with, you know, the crow's feet and things. So, another one? Did I answer that okay? Oh, yeah. I don't, uh, there were some <laughs> you should see Tar. She's saying. sitting over there doing hand signals telling me what to say. Smoking and she's not. Yes, no smoking really is. is. Smoking is a big she, thing. So. Supposed to be on here, woman. <laughs> she's on vacation. We're on vacation. So. Ah. so hmm. uh, any? Did you well, have another one? Kind of already going back, but Steph just wanted to know if you ever did all homemade gifts, where the whole family did all homemade gifts. We haven't really done that. No. Well, no. I did one time. One time I did all, not for this side of the family, but for my husband's side of the family. Well, I may have done it for us mm. too. I was making t-shirts at the time. I'd learned how to make t-shirts. And I could buy t-shirt fabric. And I mean, I could get a, it was like a brown paper sack full that you get at the grocery store. For 50 cents, I could get that full of t-shirt material. And ribbing was like a nickel or something for about a, a foot of it. So that one year, I made everybody matching t-shirts. And that's about the only really homemade gift that I ever, you know, did for Christmas, so... Uh, Dave, do you see anything? Is there any La more? La Diana says, Tara Shush. <laughs> They're hollering oh, me, be quiet. people riding yeah. to see Grandma. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Grandma's glued to her seat for sure. Or, uh, well, if you don't have um, one, go ahead, Daisy. Uh, I don't know the last um, one. Well, oh, Mrs. Rushy's asking if you have a picture of when you were younger, like when you got married or when you had young kids. Well, you have, the book has. The book has some? Some. I don't have I don't have them with me, what do but you, what Tara do might you, go look and see. What, oh, what no, do you collect? What do, what do I collect? Quilts, aprons, rolling pins, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I used to collect uh, different things. I loved the little black mammy and pappies. I just loved them so much. And I mean, I had huge collection one of the biggest collections I'd ever seen, just huge, of all these mammies and pappies. I collect, I did collect snowman. I love snowman, cute snowman, snowman that look funny and cute. Um, I don't didn't purposely collect them, but I was sitting looking at my Christmas decorations, and I have a ton of nativity scenes and didn't even realize it. I have like six nativity scenes in my living room this year, and I didn't know I collected that many. And my mom, I, my mom probably started it because she's always telling the story how they were driving all night to get to my grandma's house, and they weren't, um, she didn't have a present for me for my stocking or something. So she went and, do I dare ask what the big crashing boom was? And she stopped at a drugstore and got me a little cardboard nativity scene. And I'm 67 years old, and she still puts that up every year, that cardboard nativity scene. So I probably, that's why I like nativity scenes. But I've gotten rid of a lot of my collections now because I'm trying to downsize and, you know, get rid of things. Did you have something, Tara? There's a picture of my great-grandma. This is my mom, my great, my grandma, me, and then Tara, the four of us. Is mom, like, really, really... 
That's my mom's mom. Adorable. <gasps> yeah, she's so cute. <laughs> mom was mom was Tar was one of the cutest babies. She was she was adorable. She was really, I remember standing in the nursery window after the day after she was born, and there were people, that was back when you stood and you looked at the baby inside the nursery, and there was people on each side of me, and they said, look at that cute little baby right there, and they were pointing right at Tara. Of course, I puffed up a little bit with pride, I know, but, <laughs> but she was a really pretty baby, so, any, another question? Oh. Um, no, not that None? you have an answer. Well, I'll give you... I'm looking back. Well, I... actually, were you talking about doll clothes earlier? Yeah. I didn't hear uh -huh. that. Because Country Frow said, that's exquisite. You saved all those special handmade doll clothes. And Janet said, would love to see. I collect Barbies. Yeah, I should show them to you sometime because I can't even describe them. They're not... I've seen a lot of homemade doll clothes that moms and grandmas make. And they're cute, you know. But they took itsy bitsy little bits of rickrack... My grandma made like a Chinese, what do you call those Chinese dresses with the high mandarin <clears throat> collar? And then they had a little tiny bit of lace on this. And then she had like a cape, special capes. And she made pajam beautiful pajamas for each one of them. The little buttons and little, I don't even know how they did it because I've made Barbie doll be clo clothes before and they look like, oh my goodness. But So I don't know how they did it. But I, sometime I'll maybe show them and show you guys. So, Do you still make the gingerbread boys for your grandkids? Yes, I do. These these ones happen to be for my great nieces and nephews. And I've got my grandkids is one we haven't unloaded out of the car yet. Mine and is blank because that means I can slabber as much frosting as I want. Yeah, oh. for J Dave and Jack... I brought oh, blank sugar. ones because they take like three tubes of frosting to put on one gingerbread well, man and colors. candies. <laughs> they're different colors. We don't put that much on each gingerbread man. But about this thick. So, Jill, uh, Tina wants to know what do you hope to get for Christmas? What do I hope? What did I have on my list this attention. year? Yeah, Dad, take notes. Oh, yeah. I... There was one thing I really wanted, and it's the craziest thing. I, a lot of you know my house got robbed a couple of months ago or whatever. And I had looked for a long time for a little roll-on bottle for perfume. And I found this roll-on bottle that you just, it had a special way to pump it and get the perfume into the bottle really easy. Because I traveled, coming back here, it's easier to bring that instead of my big bottle of perfume. And so I'd watched this. It was really expensive. And I thought, I just can't afford to do that. I just couldn't do it. Finally, after about three, four years watching, seeing this show and over and or seeing it in places, this bottle, I broke down and bought it. Well, and I've only had it, had it for about a year, and that's when my purse got stolen, and that silly roll-on thing was in my purse. So I, I had to spend 30 minutes online trying to track another one down this year, and I finally found one. So I'm hoping somebody got it. I didn't get it. Oh no! Well, I was hoping to get it. So. Wow, I mean, Jill. <laughs> personal questions: Do you exercise? Do I? Oh, he <laughs> says, "Do I exercise?" And he cracks up laughing, rolling on the question. rolling on the floor. Personal question. That's the most personal question I'm getting. Michael, is do I exercise? I remember your article about. <laughs> He's laughing because I wrote an article on the website years ago about. I think it was my six things that I do to exercise, and that was all. I don't, I don't believe in exercising. Aren't I awful? But what was it? Gina said, how many steps did she take the other day over here? 200,000? 10,000. 10, you can't do 200,000. Uh, 18,000. Uh, Tara's um, gal that works with her, she said, since I've been working here, one day she made 18,000 steps over here working for Tara. And that's kind of like I am. I have my office downstairs. I have my sewing room downstairs, the laundry downstairs, and stuff like that. Half the time I get downstairs, the phone's upstairs, so I have to run up the stairs. So I think over the years I had business that was upstairs. I do a lot of running up and down stairs constantly. Um, I think that's what helps me get the exercise. I used to, up until about two years ago, I did yoga. A little bit. Of, I'm not a diehard yoga person. I mean, I do like 20 minutes of yoga, maybe I would do, and but then I got neuropathy, so it's a little bit harder. So I did about 20 minutes of really simple 
I didn't want to stretch anything too much. I mean, I didn't want to pull. I wasn't into it that much. Um, but I used to do, for about the first 45 years, 50 years of my life, I did like 10 sit-ups, 10 push-ups. Um, I did 50 leg lifts on each side and some waistbands. And I did that every day. I just do crunches, crunches sit-ups, and push-ups. Yeah, Ooh, I did those money. every day, and that's faithfully. So, yeah, Michael? Crystal super chatted. Please just a camera oh, and some spirits. Oh. <laughs> she super chatted $10. So I she don't think Grandma will, will not let her do that. No. no, I'm sorry, Crystal. She won't. She won't. She won't. <laughs> They've given us $10 so they could get a picture of you and see you. <laughs> they can get a picture of you. They'll give us $10. $10. <laughs> we have to refund it if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, poor my poor mom. She dreads coming over live stream because we're always wanting to put the camera on her. Yeah. But I think the main thing, I didn't have an exercise routine where I spent 20 minutes or an hour a day. If I had something boiling on the stove, I would drop down on the floor and do sit-ups. Tara's laughing at me. You know, but I would. I would do that. Uh, sometimes I would lay talking on the phone doing leg lifts, you know, that type of thing. I didn't have a solid, and so I was able to get the stuff done all throughout the day. I tried, oh, do I have time? What time is it? I tried, I got to tell them my walking. I decided I was going to start out. I'm 65 years old. Oh, I'm 67 no. now, but I was 65, yeah. and I thought, okay, now's the time I'm going to do an exercise program. I'm going to walk <laughs> every morning. I'm going to walk. Okay. I mean, everybody talks about hiking in the mountains or in the woods or along a stream and seeing nature and feeling God surround them and doing all this. And then other people say, I become one with myself when I walk. Or I feel so, the endorphins are just shooting out of me and I'm I so energized. Walking. I know you guys do. That's why I'm being smart. But. I feel so energized. I come home and clean the whole house from top to bottom. So I'm thinking, well, maybe I'm missing something here. Maybe <laughs> I should go walking. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go walking. Okay, this is my first, like, two weeks of walking and experience nature. I'm walking along the first day. There are these horrible black bugs and if you guys don't know by now i'm terrified of bugs but these big black bugs all over the sidewalk so i'm trying to dodge around these silly bugs on the sidewalk that's my first day the second day i'm walking along and here is a possum on the sidewalk trotting 10 feet in front of me i'm thinking all right what do you do when a possum's in Do I run? You just walk past. Do they hurt you? Should I slow down so I don't catch just... up with it? A possum, it creeped me out seeing this possum waddling down the thing. I'm thinking, okay, She's I've not a be, nature person. I've got to become one. <laughs> so the next day I'm thinking, what, what, oh, then there was the cats fighting. I mean, they were tearing each So I'm trying, what do you do? I didn't want them to hurt each other. So this is my experience with nature. The, about the fifth day, I go walking along, and I'm just marching down. I'm enveloped, or is it enveloped? Is that what it is? I'm surrounded by a spider web. That thing must have been four feet tall. I'm not joking. It was four feet. They get really big back there in Kansas. <laughs> A big, I, it were wrapped in my hair. So here I'm trying to get the silly spider web off my body. I'm thinking, Sorry. what do people do this for? So then finally I went, I'm walking. I thought, okay, now I'm just going to walk along. And I'm saying, okay, dear God, I have not felt any endorphins yet. I go home. I'm so tired. I can't hardly crawl in the front door. And I just collapsed for the rest of the day. So the endorphins aren't working. Nature's not working. So, okay, dear God, I'm trying to pray here and do scriptures or do something while I'm walking along. And I am not figuring this out at all. I don't feel one with you any more than I do when I'm sitting at home on my couch. And so all of a sudden, out of the blue, it was like God said, relax. You don't need to become one with me while you're walking. You don't need to become one with nature. You don't need to even feel endorphins. Just relax and walk. So I relaxed and walked, and I didn't do any of the above. But that lasted for about six months of walking business, and then the Kansas heat hit. So I, like I said, I am not a big exercise fan. I just, 
I just <laughs> not into exercising. Uh, what? Just a reflective person. Paradise says cleaning a home is exercise. Don't need a club when you do that. You know, really, I I think that's part of what oh, right. I've you know, I wash my own car. I don't drive it through the car wash. I wash my own car. I I take and I don't blow the leaves off the sidewalk. I sweep the leaves instead. I do a lot of things like that that I think people don't do as much now that causes me, even my phone, I have to get up and walk into the other room, you know, to get it instead of just having it right there in my pocket or anything. Yes, Michael? <clears throat> Ladiana asked, what are your best tips on kitchen storage, especially for a 1960s U-shaped kitchen? Oh, yeah, I was going to say oh. that. Oh. I just looked at my mom because her ki her kitchen has zero storage. I feel so bad for her. <laughs> huh? Remodeling. remodeling. Michael says sense. remodeling. I think that's the best tip. It is so hard. As a matter of fact, that's I have a 1940s kitchen, and I have this much countertop, and then I have another 12-inch area of countertop. And that's really all I pretty much have in my kitchen for countertop. And I have, I have cabinets, but they're not handy. I can't even use most of my cabinets. So I know, I know what you're talking about. What I end up doing is, and this works for me, so it, you have to kind of adapt these ideas to your own home and your own kitchen. I can step just one step out of my kitchen, and I'm right there in my garage pretty much. So I have shelving on there in the garage where I keep any large bowls, any large platters, uh, things like that that I, I don't use every single day, but I need once, maybe once a month. If I, I don't have a crock pot now, but if I had a crock pot, I would keep the crock pot on there because uh, I don't use it that often. But just odds and ends, uh, holiday platters and um, jars, I, my, my canning jars, things like that I would keep out in the garage. I take, and I store a lot of my food down in the basement, and then I just, for example, I maybe will have 15 cans of soup, but I only keep one or two of the cans. Now, I, I'm by myself. If you have a family, you might want to keep four cans up in the cabinet. So instead of keeping the whole stockpile of cans, like if you have 10 cans of green beans, don't keep them all up in the kitchen cabinet. You could store them in another closet in the house or in a basement or the garage or something. Uh, find different, what I'm saying is find another place to store the majority of the things you don't, you know, that you don't need that often. Um, I do the little plastic uh, shelving things where you have, you can stack, you know, put things underneath and then stack like plates on top. I do that a lot. Um, just look around. It's, that's almost another whole video for me to get into right now. I, I like to use a carousel. I have a carousel thing that I keep my spices on in just a little area. And then another thing is keep it simple. I was noticed watching somebody cook on TV the other day or on YouTube, and she had like 10 spices out to do this one dish. And I thought, you know, I don't use a lot of spices, but yeah, my food tastes okay, I think. Doesn't it taste okay? I don't use a lot. What? My food tastes okay. But I don't use huge amounts of spices. I haven't really eat it, eaten your... You haven't eaten my food, huh? <laughs> Except my crescent I mean, rolls. Those are good, but I don't remember you putting any spice on yeah. canned crescent rolls. I don't... Yeah, see, I don't use a whole lot of spices. I'm so having... keep things like that yeah, to a so minimum, because then I can keep all my spices on one little turn tray table thing. So do things like that. And I, I, I need to go into another whole thing after Christmas, really, on that. But we're not doing videos for a moment, are we? Go ahead. Michael, did you have something? Um, sorry. You're, Michael makes faces kind of back there at me, so I know when we've got something. <laughs> uh, well, Jennifer says, would love to hear from a 90-year-old, the greatest generation. White picket fence, I think it's great four generations under the same roof. They're trying real hard to get Grandma and Grandma. <laughs> they said they would love to hear from a 90-year-old. That's the great generation. You guys are called the great generation. Did you know that? <laughs> they, they you can learn a lot. They would, would love your, your words of <clears throat> they would love your wisdom, and they would love to see a, a guy who served in four branches of the five. Yes, my dad was in, was he, wasn't he in all five branches? No, not four. Na not navy, merchant right? merchant yeah. Marines is kind what of navy. Navy, right? merchant Marines, merchant Marines navy. Merchant Marines is Navy. Merchant Marines is Navy. So he was in that, yeah. So he was in so all he, five? Yeah, he was in all wow. five. So my dad was in all five. So. Uh, Colleen said, a, oh, sorry. Oh, 
Colleen said, I think your positive, happy self, what keeps you so healthy and young looking? And I was thinking, actually, there is a point to that, though. I think a lot of times people look old because they have a stressful outlook on life. You know, I've heard this before that when people ask about, you know, what beauty products do you use, that type of thing. I heard somebody say one time, the most beautiful thing a woman can do to make herself look beautiful, the thing she can do to look, make her look beautiful is to smile. And so there may be some truth to that, you know, that if you smile. And I was noticing, I was, of course, I, I talk, I'm an introvert, so I really don't talk that much. Same, that's why I haven't, like, But when you yeah. quiet. <laughs> <laughs> that's news to mom. Look, the face mom's making, that's news to her. I'm quiet to everyone um, except for my family. But I was doing shopping this past week for presents and different things, and I would go in there, and I would, I didn't just talk on my cell phone I've talked about this before I didn't just you know grab my groceries up and walk out I would smile at people at the cashiers and I would tell them you know do you have to work today it's all you know make some kind of conversation like are you having to work on Christmas Eve or something like that or I'll see a picture of their grandchild on a pin on their thing and I say is that your grandbaby or something like that and I tell you, they will stand and give me a five to ten minute conversation, and they just light up. And you know, I think if you just smile at somebody, if you just smile at people as you're walking through the grocery store, it makes a big difference in, you know, the way you look, and people will smile back at you, I think. So that doesn't have to do with beauty, I guess, but you know what I mean. Well, sometimes that one smile... Oh, changes in their whole changes life. the day for people. Change. I've had that people do that for me. That you know, I've had things go wrong, and they'll just say one nice thing or smile at me or wave or something, and it just think of yourself when somebody does that to you. What you feel like, and then you'll know. Shelly like, says, "Got my books in the mail today. Can't read. To, can't wait to read Penny Pinch and Mama." Oh, thank you, Shelly. Good. I hope you enjoy them. Um, Lori wants to know, where did you get the name Tara? I've never heard that name before. We were Tara going, I, I kind of like Tara, T-A-R-A. And my husband said, well, let's do her, have her do something different. And so he, he stuck a W in the, in, after the A. And so we call, he called it Tara. And so we kind of almost made it up a little bit. I feel so bad. I, think, I was thinking that coming out here. I thought... Is a mother allowed to change her child's name after she's like in her late 40s? I'm going to change it to Shaniqua. Shaniqua? Shaniqua. She wants to be Shaniqua. She's always said that. She's always wanted to be Shaniqua well, for some reason. I want reason. to be Dave spelled D A I M A, but you guys don't want to. <laughs> but it's hard because oh, she never know? gets any little license plates with her name on and stuff like that. Yes, Michael? On a related topic, Kathy wants to know if you're ever going to be married. If I'm ever. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Did you hear my daughter laughing? Wants to know if I'm going to ever remarry. She's going to say, it's a little bit late, isn't it, Mom? You know, I don't have any qualms against remarrying, really. Uh, but I just have... Applications may be sent to P.O. Box 193, Mead, Colorado, 80542. Did you hear that? Tara said, Must have money. Tara said, <laughs> applications can be sent to, and she said her address, but must have money is Don't what she's saying. Looks, just money. Doesn't care about looks, well, just Doesn't care about looks. I care about looks. She just cares about the money is what she's saying. <laughs> so, no, I don't have any. I, it's not like I'm one of these people that say I never, ever will. I just figure when it's time, if I'm supposed to, I will. Actually, to be honest, now at my age, it's kind of fun being on my own. You know, I don't have to cook anybody a meal. I can go to bed when I want. I can watch. Uh, my mom's in there. <laughs> my mom, she's been married, what, almost 70 years now? And she's saying, I'm saying it's kind of nice being on your own. She said, yeah. <laughs> They've been married almost 70 years. And she's thinking this would be a good idea to be on your own. <laughs> No, my folks actually do get along. <laughs> they really do. But, you know, it's, I'm in no big hurry or two. Oh, but it's so funny. Ellie, Ellie wants me to get married so bad. She talks about it all the time. Really? She does? Yes, she does. Her and Alex both used to, but Ellie's stuck with well, it longest. She talks about it. It'd be interesting if you could get married to 
another dude who has family who is actually nice and a nice family to kill you. <laughs> so we have a side of the family that I thought for a while know, Michael and my son wished decent. I would get married so they wouldn't have to do all my handyman work for me because <laughs> I have so much handyman work that needs to be done all the time. But yeah. wow, a lot of people talking about smiling and being shy, and some people were talking about how they uh, music mad. Hi, Jill. Just got in from Major Grocery Hall, and you noticed no one, I mean, no one smiled at the supermarket. When I smiled, they would get a surprised look on their face. Yeah, they do. But you know, you keep it up, and you'd be surprised how many people actually start smiling back at you. But well, well, when Ellie and I were in London, people on the tube would not look at anyone else. Yeah. But she and I were smiling and saying hi to people, and some of them kind of lit up when we actually talked to them. You know, it's just that people aren't used to it. That's what's sad about that, is they're yeah. not reacting because they're not used to seeing people actually smile at them. Well, but, yeah, go yeah, ahead. Now me and Dad are, like, best friends with every single employee at our Kroger grocery store. Yeah. And it, so every time we go in, they're like, hey, Mike and Dave. And, you know, if you're kind of... An introvert like I am, and uh, it, these things are hard. It's hard to do. It's really hard to do. It's very hard. But it's like I tell my introvert grandkids, once you, you have to make yourself do it. And my mom, she was really good. She went, and when we were younger, she taught us certain manners. You know, we had to say hello to people. Um, it, it was like a form of respect, and we would... If somebody spoke to us, we were required to speak back. And she, my mom is very much an extrovert, so she, we'd have people at our house 24-7. Uh, Uncle Dave says hi to you guys. Oh, hi, son of mine. Yep. Dave's, David's on. Oh. Yeah. He's on. Hi, um, hi but Uncle Dave. She, we had social stuff all the time. I mean, she would have, I was thinking the other day, it would be nothing for her to have 20 people over for dinner once a month, you know, this type of thing. People were in and out of our house. Even my friends, when I left home, my brother's friends, they would come over and visit my parents. And so it was just like a revolving door at our home. So I got used to watching my folks interacting and seeing how they did the socializing. So I had a background where I knew what was supposed to be done. It was a matter of making myself go ahead and doing it. And once I started doing it, it felt so awkward and uncomfortable smiling at people and stuff, saying hi or something like that. I made myself do it. I don't even give it a sec second thought now. It is such a habit with me. It just comes out. And I think that's what you need to do. Don't be afraid. You need to, that's, people live in the spirit of fear anymore for everything. And that's one of those things. And you need to think more of them than you do of yourself. Stop thinking, I'm feeling awkward. I'm feeling uncomfortable. Think, am I going to help them and make them feel better? And that, that's a whole, that'll change the whole ball game. Yes. Well, and if you smile at them and they kind of have a weird look on their face, they probably aren't even realizing they're figuring out what's going on there. Like, yeah. And they're going it's, about their lives not really thinking about you. So it's not it's, it's not like It's offense. not like a, they're offended at you. It, Michael was saying, you know, if somebody smile if you smile at somebody and they have a puzzled look, it's not that they're mad at you. It's just that they're trying to figure out, you know, what's happening for this and that type of Grandma thing. Wants David to know if he got his birthday card. Da yes, David got his birthday card. I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you. You got packages. Oh, cards. okay. Oh, I got packages. And cards. Oh, okay. Uh, Tourist says, you can open those in Bergen, Norway, my town, everybody smiles when we have sun. And when you have <laughs> sun. <laughs> yeah, I imagine you would. Oh, I got snowman. Remember I said I collected snowman? How cute. Oh. Cute. Oh, oh, this is from Kathy. To Jill from Kathy. Oh. Oh, look at, Look at, oh, Aren't those adorable? Those are okay. so cute. Aren't those cute? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my word. You want to borrow them, Dave? Nah. <laughs> They're probably too small. I'll break them. <laughs> those are so cute. Thank you. And I love... I love wearing socks like this with the designs on them. I have all kinds of different ones. And so, and I didn't bring my Christmas socks with me this time. So the, I'll, I'll actually wear these on Christmas. Kathy, Thank you. Kathy. Kathy, who, I don't know who. I, I don't know which Kathy. David wants to we'll see figure it, we'll, I'll figure it out after we 
David wants to see He's Grandma and Grandpa. In the chat. He's yelling David in wants the to camera. see Wait, Grandma and Grandpa. For us, so Dave can open those two. Wait, what? This one? No, I'm not opening any. You open ours and Nan can open. No, I'm not you want a good. Me to open them? I'm not a good talker. So this let, is to the Kellum family. She's Ooh, what a pretty! Wow, wow okay. isn't that pretty? This Just, is from Roberta. I, I think know. so. Yeah, from Ro New Jersey. Roberta, Roberta New Jersey. S. Yeah. Dear Tar and Mike, message of seasons, Mary, brightest blessings come to you. Merry Christmas. How pretty is that? Ooh, that's beautiful. Isn't that a pretty thank card? You. Wow, thank you. That is really pretty card. Here. You guys come up with some of the prettiest cards. What, Rosalie wants to know what size socks does David wear? They're 12 now. I'm 11 oh, and a half to be offici officially. See, this is from the Moss yeah, family <laughs> in Minnesota. Oh, cute. I'll be at 12 by next week, Dad. Oh, she wrote a letter. I'll let you read the letter from Janelle. What? How cute. It's like family pictures of them and everything. Uh, be careful. Yeah. There's glitter on there. Denise didn't hear. Denise did not hear Buster walk in here tonight. <gasps> You're not on the ball, are you, Denise? <laughs> That's because he was walking on carpet. Wait, are these their kids? Thank you. Thank you so much. This is a nice letter in there for Mom. Hang on. This is I from... David in Florida. Oh. <gasps> Ooh. No, there's a thing on the, there's a thing on the back to From Florida. Dave and Joyce. Love it. Love it when you are on Living on Dime. Love the cookbook. We'll get the new one soon. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Isn't that pretty? We could see. Hmm. Wait, where My is mom's. <laughs> is there, isn't that pretty? Look at the inside. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, it's Thomas Kincaid. Oh, wow. I thought that looked like. See, when it's dark, that'll glow. Oh, wow, that's yeah. cool. I have to tell you one thing. The white hmm. picket fence says, I was going to gift my penny pinching mama to my oldest, but after starting to read it, she'll have to wait until I'm too old to see to read it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. That's too funny. <laughs> I was going to say, you could go like be a frugal like I am and make a copy on the copy machine for a million. Now, that, that doesn't it get us a, a sales, lot, does it? It does cost it costs a lot more than just buying the Yeah, book. it does. It really does. <laughs> This is from Kelly in Minnesota. Isn't that pretty? Oh my goodness, Kelly. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Oh, that that is so sweet. Thank you so much. I'll read the letter in a little afterwards. Oh wow. Look at the cute paper though. Isn't that cute Santa paper? <coughs> oh, thank you. That is so, I appreciate it. You guys are, we have, we have the best viewers. They, they just are so sweet. Okay, I'm going to slaughter this name, I'm afraid. On, on per? The on -per? It's O-N-Y-P-E-R. I don't know how to pronounce that in New York. Look at the cute snowman on the front. Isn't that cute? Oh, Shannon Marie says... <laughs> Oh, oh, look oh at wait. That. wait, what? And oh, it, wow. it's Korea, Korea, Korea. Wait, is that C O R E R A? I know I'm slaughtering your name. I'm so sorry. Oh, thank you. Oh, what she a doesn't pretty little card here. with the snowman. I love it. Hmm. Um, okay. Shannon, hang on. Shannon Marie wants to acknowledge Mike for being so sweet and prompt, replying to her emails. Regarding her book order. He's a sweetheart. Well, thank so you. So there you go, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Somebody thinks you're a sweetheart, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> hey. I'm sure I have at least four fans at out there. At least four fans out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, okay, go ahead and ask the Dad question. Ask the Dad question. Well, first of all, let me tell you. Um, Christy says that 80, my great aunt, married a youngster of 68. <laughs> Leslie says never too late. Music Mad says oh, takes Jesus too long. Help us. <laughs> music, music Mad in New Zealand says takes too long to train him. It takes too long to train him for sure. <laughs> to, uh, and, to marry one now would take way too long to train him. <laughs> yeah, and James says I was never going to get remarried and I'm getting remarried in March. <laughs> uh, Karen says I hear you speak of your former husband. Does he keep in your lives? He did for many, many, many years until um, it was around the time BJ was born. 
and he was very active in you know very much in our lives and then just oh he moved away and uh, uh, there were some things that happened you know just different things and we moved to Idaho and so he is not he ha the kids haven't had a whole lot to do with him I did too even I had stuff I saw him he moved us to Idaho and everything or me to Idaho and helped our build a greenhouse so you know he was involved in our lives but things just, you know, uh, distance. We were in Idaho. He was in Ohio. And he started changing about that time. His attitude was a little bit different. So the kids just backed off. And I kind of backed off in honor of them. And a few years, I don't know, about four years ago maybe or five, uh, they did see him again for a while. But they haven't seen him since then uh, very much. So now he's no longer really active in the kids' life at all. So... Oh, sorry. I don't. Uh, I don't have any other questions at the moment. I'm sure there are some. Is, but oh, do we? Need are to, we supposed to? Oh, Tara's giving us, huh? I love you, oh, Jennifer Weber. Oh, I love hi, how Jennifer. You focus on the value of things instead of the cost. You're so genuinely kind. Oh, thank you. I, you know, Jennifer was at our meetup. I love that. That was the best meetup I've ever been to with people. I mean, it was really good. So, I wish we could do it again. Oops, am I talking too much? Are we supposed to be wrapping? We're supposed to be wrapping. Well, <laughs> Amy says, look, Amy T, the crowd would love to see a frugal wedding, so you need to take one for the team, <laughs> I need to take one for the team. <laughs> oh, Amy, that's uh, good. That is so good. She said they need to see a frugal wedding, so I need to take one for the team. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Oh, thank you, everyone, saying kind things about Mike. I think there were six fans. I was mistaken. You had six fans. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Oh, is How David impressive. and Shayla still on there? Yes. Uh, oh. They keep trying to get me to turn the camera around to Grandma. To Grandma. Gra Gra David and Shayla wanted to see you so bad. Is but that it? Thinking. Are we supposed to wrap Tara's hollering at it? She's oh. not. We're not supposed to be looking at her. Dave has. Oh wait. Oh, David, we'll Facebook, oh, we'll we'll, we'll Facebook you when we get done here. Tara said to tell you. Uh, here's what I thought you might want to answer, but what's that? Well. I'm not quite sure what direction they want. Arlen is asking, what should one do if we have unexpected guests coming for the holidays? How do we survive? I'm not uh, sure what that, what, in what context. You, Tara says you lock the door. Turn off all the lights. <laughs> Turn off all the lights. Put, put 16 newspapers on the driveway. <laughs> lock the door and turn off all the lights. <laughs> How do you... You know, that is a rough one. It depends on who the who the guests are, too. You know, if it's total strangers, you might could uh, kind of tactfully try to get out of it. If it's family, you're almost stuck with them. I mean, I don't know. What do you do with unexpected guests that show up, Ma? Do, is there... I don't know. We just, we just always had them come in anyway. And, you know, I thought it kind of spoils your Christmas a little bit, but... Really, that's not what Christmas is about, if you think about it. You, we need to welcome the strangers. <laughs> we're, that's what we're supposed to do. And it's one Christmas, maybe, so just try to welcome them in as best as you can and then get down on your knees and pray that they don't stay too long. <laughs> so, no, but, you know, there's really not a whole lot you can do unless it's... Yeah, pray for a blizzard, Tara said. You know, you could, if you think you can tactfully try to get out of it, you could try that. But um, if they're just going to show up, there's not a whole lot you can do, I'm afraid. <laughs> oh, Shani Wynn says, would love to see Mike and the boys cook. You will get to see us do yes. that. Yes. As a matter of fact, you'll get to see them do it a lot of cooking because as soon as I'm gone, they'll take over and do the rest of the live streams till Tara comes back. So I was just trying to give Michael a little bit of a break and time to prepare between now and next week or so. I might be here on Wednesday, but after that, he'll ha he'll have to do it all himself. Oh, Karen wants to know if you're going to do a cooking show while you're here. And also, Jack was, Jack was like, I hope I get to do a show with Nan. <laughs> well, I hadn't really planned on it. We might think about it. Um, I don't know. I mostly was probably, it'll be after Christmas, so I was thinking doing more like on budgeting or uh, organizing that type of thing so we'll kind of see I'm not even sure why I'm hesitating is I it's hard for me to cook in Tara's kitchen you know how you go to a different kitchen you don't know where all the things are and it's just a little bit harder and I could I suppose but we'll think about it so, so what Michael 
Jamie says, Amy T, find her a man in Australia and we will come there for her oh, wedding. Oh, listen, if you find me somebody cool in Australia, I'm on my way tomorrow. Oh, no, I'll start out Dude, tonight. oh my goodness. Oh, I would love to go to Australia. Then we'd have an excuse to visit Amy in Perth. Yes, yeah. then we'd have an excuse to visit you, Amy. They could all come out and stay with me and visit with you and everything. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> so, so, are you handsome? Huh? Yeah, he wants to show his cat. Oh, okay. Jack has something to show real quick. Um... Same. I've made this little uh, catapult. Catapult? So basically what you do is Are you going to shoot it at Grandma or Dad? You. Oh, and me! <laughs> so what you do is you kind of push on this and uh -huh. pull this back. That cocks it. And then... Maybe not straight at Nan, maybe over to the side. And that might hurt. You push the button. <laughs> it's not very efficient. It's not, it's not very, very effective. That's pretty clever, though. It's not that's very real. effective. Look at you did it with the popsicle stick. How clever. The popsicle sticks and the harpins. This oh, kid, he's always building piece. something. That I'm waiting so for smart. Dave to earn a million dollars to pay for it and Jack to build me a house. Uncle Dave said hi. So, anyway, if we um, are we supposed to wrap up, Michael? Yeah. A um, couple quick things. Okay. Shay says, I definitely want more budgeting and organizing tips. We probably will have some shows going on. I might do, on Wednesday, we might do, since it's after Christmas, yeah, somebody, something short. Somebody was asking if we'd have any shows next week, and I was thinking we would do the Wednesday Wednesday show. one, yeah. We'll do the Wednesday next week. We won't have a regular show on Monday because it's no. Christmas Eve. No, Monday is Christmas Eve, so we won't have a regular one. Oh, so, yeah. But anyway. Uh, after that, so. Uh, so. Is that. I mean, it could keep going, but I think. We probably should wrap okay. it since okay. here. Okay, yeah. So Thanks, we're, we're going to wrap. And Merry Christmas, you guys. Relax and try to enjoy it as much as you can. So, And we'll see you on Wednesday, I think. Yes. I'll be here. So Merry, Merry, Christmas, Merry Christmas, everyone. everybody. Bye-bye. Oops. Oops. <laughs> The guy who has to stop the show isn't stopping the The guy show. that's supposed to stop the show isn't stopping it, huh? Okay. They, he needs you, Dave. Say bye, everyone. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Sayonara. <laughs> mm, isn't that cute? So, stopping, it's not stopped yet. Leave stopping. the camera. Stopping, not stopped yet. <laughs> <laughs>